Hello and welcome to LPL Showdown. Tonight, Snake's Gauntlet continues as they face off against LGD. But first, Windless Energy Pacemaker will have to take on Ganty with their newly admitted midlaner Xiaohu. After LGD and Snake contend with each other, the Samsung junglers meet in Vici Gaming vs Team WE. To round off the night, Master 3 and OMG will likely goof off in a less than serious best of two. Wow. Energy Pacemakers vs. Gamtee. This will probably be a race for last place. Initially, I had a lot of hope for EP, but you know how I feel about that situation. I mean, they've had, they had a great understanding of the early game, but that's pretty much gone. That being said, this will be a perfect game for both teams to really pick it up, and it'll, it's a great learning experience. And GamT has been showing a lot of solid picks and bans. They understand the meta, so that's a really good point on them. So perhaps the team can grow and take this opportunity to gain momentum into the next set in the weekend. For GamT, the spotlight will probably be on Let Me. He's been showing the most promise on the team, has a really solid champion pool, and has been playing a lot of solid and very strong meta picks like Nar. I believe he'll be able to outplay Amazing J in teamfights, 100%. As for EP, I'd say the light's shining on Drizzle to scrap Gram T to submission. Uh, he's pretty mechanically strong, but that could be the only thing going for him. This has the potential to be the messiest game of the split, so get your popcorns ready, find yourself a comfortable seat. I'd say this is a 2 over for Gram T. Snake is a really highly pressured team right now in their situation, given that they've gone above and beyond expectations, uh, you know, considering their LSPL performance and stuff like that, and how they're doing so well when everybody thought King was the team to beat that was coming from the LSPL and transitioning into the LPL. So, Snake versus LGD is going to be an interesting matchup because Snake... I feel like Snake has a disadvantage in some of the things that LGD are really good at. Now, I will say that what a lot of people didn't expect was for Beast and Ella to perform so well. These two are relatively unknown Koreans, and we saw that B, B team Koreans, or sorry, B tier Koreans, didn't really work out especially well last split. So, it makes you wonder why they picked him up in the first place. But luckily for them, it actually managed to work out. Um, now, one thing we actually, despite despite talking about how we feel like Snake is going to fall over and over and stuff like this, one thing we do have to actually point out, because statistics don't lie, is that Snake did have wins against decent teams is, uh, along the same scale of LGD. LGD has a 6-2 and two record in win-loss, and their wins are against Energy Pacemaker, Master 3, and Star Art Royal Club. So... When you consider that uh, EDG, uh, one or EDG lost to Snake 2-0, that is something you have to consider. Now, EDG obviously did look like they slipped there, and Snake looked like they had a lot of things going right for them, but it's still something you can't really discount. But at the same time, you can't think of Snake as this, uh, you know, rising star or basically invulnerable team that's just got things figured out in the region, because you did see that they were exposed by King in the last week. So they've exposed their vulnerability to a team that usually had favorable odds against them in the LSPL. So it's not... I. It'll, it'll be interesting to see if King keeps on rising or if they actually fall off here, really. Now, although Ella, as I mentioned, the Beast and Ella pairing are doing great, it's really hard to say how Ella will fare against PYL. PYL is pretty much a god in terms of his contribution. Everybody loves to play with him. He's a great leader role. He captains the team from champ select and tells AD carry what to do. He's really, really top tier support, both mechanically and, and cerebrally. So that's great and all, but the thing the thing with uh, LGD is that, sure, PYL is great, and they have a lot of superstar talent on that team. We've already talked about in previous episodes about how they've had to have some of the top Koreans on their squad because they're running Acorn and Flame for top lane. And they also have Imp in the AD carry position. So the question mark is always Chuen, a.k.a. TBQ. Now, we, we always talk about this guy 
and I still feel like nothing's really changed. His performance at best is still a big question mark. It's sometimes okay, and you know, there's, there's flashes of brilliance here and there, but for the most part, it's largely mediocre. Now, you pair that with the fact that the jungle talent has greatly improved in China, and that's a big problem. Beast is actually quite a respectable jungler. When he's working with Ella, he does, they have great vision control, and they do things really well. So, I do think that the jungle support matchup will be the matchup to watch. I love Beast and Ella as a pairing, uh, I love PYL as a support, and I always like to see if Twin will actually improve, because he's stayed, he's stayed on a, a roster now for so long, and he's just been watching the team rebuild itself around him, just entirely, and he's just sitting there and, and kind of, you know, hasn't really moved in terms of performance, so we'll see. Spirit faces Dandy once again in a Samsung jungler face-off, but it's likely Spirit will only find frustrations. These teams have an odd amount of parallels in that their strengths are in the ability of their junglers to prop up their laners well. Dandy just has an edge in that his solo lanes will likely dominate WEs, and that he'll probably have an easier time navigating his way around teamfights and farming earlier on. If WE has any hope of leveraging an advantage, it will be in the bottom lane where the biggest question mark hovers. Both SDYZ and Vasily come into LPL with storied histories. SDYZ is returning from a half-year ban with a lot of hype, and Vasily has returned from North America to join a team capable of winning worlds so he can help support his family. Both teams have been reliant on champion picks. SDYZ has done much better on Caitlyn, and Vasily has mainly excelled on Tristana. If SDYZ's in-your-face style can get him a lead with his stronger pick, his previous synergy with Spirit could set him in good stead. But SDYZ will have Mod to contend with, and a much stronger teleport threat from Gucci Gaming's top laner carry. WE's hopes of turning their fates will look pretty bleak. To be frank, when I heard I was taking Masters 3 versus OMG, I gave a loud sigh and eye roll. But you have to take out the trash at least once a week. Nicknamed Dottie's Retirement Home, Masters 3 has yet to show any signs of life past random twitches across Dottie's keyboard where they managed to smear low bracket LPL teams. This is not the paper perfect roster of Looper and Dottie, and actually, the most consistent players have been their bot lane in Love CD and Candy. That's a serious issue when Dottie is on a team. The one common point is where OMG and Masters 3 have effectively been trolling through the regular season, none more apparent than last night when Snake bit back and took a game off OMG before they decided to take the gloves off and stomp through the last set. An interesting point of conversation is the sheer size of LPL in relation to both these team strategies going forward. Now that the top 8 teams are allowed into the playoffs, the pressure for placing highly during normal season isn't as in demand. Yes, there are reputations to uphold, but historically, the normal season for LPL has been a clear difference in dedication and performance from playoffs. This is important to also apply to Masters 3. Dada and the other Korean players are having 10 times more games due to the size and schedule of LPL. Example, Spirit lost 14 games in the entire 2014 season, while in three weeks of LPL, he's already lost 10. These players have never been under a microscope for this long, and the jury's still out if Dade or other all-star Koreans are going to perform when it counts. But this game shouldn't matter in the scheme of things unless Dade wants to make a point of OMG. Featured matchups should be cool versus Dade, but flip a coin on who's going to show up. <laughs> 